I hope you're well. I'm in a bit of a different location this morning for a Facebook Live. If you can see me, do say hello. Hopefully you can hear me. I will just check the comments. Oh, we've got some people joining us already. That's nice. Morning, Anne-Marie. Morning, Kat. Do say hello. Let me know where you're watching from as well. It's always nice to know where everybody is watching from. Sometimes it highlights some problem areas. Um, and also, sometimes you can find a friend on there, which is quite nice. So do say hello if you can see me. Now, this morning, I am going to be talking all about Send Family Holidays it's a very complicated topic, actually, um, and I'm completely out of my comfort zone of talking about the usual EHCPs and trauma. <laughs> Love a bit of trauma chat in the morning. Um, so I'm looking for a bit of audience participation today. I'm going to keep an eye on the top uh, on the um, comments. Anne Marie's from Burnley. Oh, do you know I was just listening to a podcast this morning. Um, the Jordan North one. I won't say the, the title, just in case his children watching. <laughs> and um, doesn't he come from Burnley? He always talks about Burnley. Um, so do say hello. I'm Chrissa, by the way. I'm the founder of Sunshine Support. Um, and every other Tuesday I come on and I chat about different topics. And if you want me to talk about a specific topic, send us some topics and we will absolutely talk about them. Um, but today we're going to be talking about Send Family Holidays because we did a podcast on this. Um, in fact, I think it's just been released. Um, so this month's release on the podcast is talking about Send Family Holidays. Um, and we went into quite a lot of detail and it made me realise just how complicated they are and how different we all sort of approach them. So I thought it'd be great to hear your stories this morning and talk a little bit about holidays and also childcare, because sometimes holidays aren't possible and we do have to work, you know, many of us work um, and send childcare is absolutely bonkers. Now, for those who've never heard the term send, um, it's short for special educational needs and disabilities. Um, sadly, it's just a much quicker way <laughs> of saying that. Um, <clears throat> And so I will be referring to the term send this morning. Um, so as I say, do say hello if you can see me. Morning, Ange. Morning, Rachel. Morning, Jess. Morning, Katie. Oh, we've got lots of people chatting now. Anne-Marie says she's taken a nine-year-old autistic with ADHD. Um, and Anne-Marie is both autistic with ADHD abroad for the next for the first time next Friday. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I will come to your comments in a minute. So continue to say hello if you can see me um, and I'll come back to your comments shortly. I just want to make a start because I do get told off for these things. Um, Louise says, hi, Chrissa, you look so far away than usual. So far away. Is it because I'm sat backwards a little bit? I'm normally like this, aggressively up to the camera. And I thought, I'll sit backwards and you can see my lovely hub. Our lovely hub. It's not mine, actually. <laughs> Must stop saying that. Must stop saying that. Doesn't belong to me. Must stop sleeping here, avoiding the children. I'm just joking. I don't do that. Um, <laughs> so let's get started. Let's have a little chat about send family holidays. Um, so a few weeks ago, so every two weeks I come on and do these Facebook lives. And um, sometimes I do an impromptu one that absolutely causes havoc in the team as well. Um, but I came on a couple of weeks ago and I was talking about send family uh, tax, send parent tax, all the things that we are affected by as send families that other families aren't. Or perhaps the things that we're affected by as send parents that when we're parenting our other children who don't have send... It, there's a stark difference between the two. And I always call it send parent tax. Um, and it just widens that gap, doesn't it, of accessibility, affordability, equity. Um, and it's really blooming annoying, to be quite fair. Um, but when I was actually doing a bit of research and chatting to my colleagues and chatting to our community as well, and obviously I've reached out on my personal um, Instagram as well. So if you're not following me on Instagram, please do, because I put a lot of reels up on there that you don't see on Sunshine Support. So that's just Sunshine Chrissa, at Sunshine Chrissa. If you have a look there, you'll find me. Um, I spoke to my community on there as well, and um, what I noticed was there's a huge gap of privilege in the holiday arena, 
as well. And I'm sure that, you know, if you have children with Zend, you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, so I am keen to know more about your own holiday experiences because I've not come across two that are the same. So this is why it's a really difficult topic for me to talk about this morning, because with EHCPs, for instance, whilst we all feel very alone and we all feel like our case is the worst case, when we receive the cases into sunshine, more often than not, they're all quite similar. The problems you're facing with local authorities are quite similar. They don't want to pay. So they they use underhand tactics to try not to pay. Um, however, with holiday experiences, it's really hard to, to sort of bunch them all up <laughs> and say, oh, yeah, everybody's experience is more or less the same because it's not. Um, and some people have had really amazing experiences and others have said, no, it's put me off holidaying in total. Like that is it for us. Um, and I've had lots of, like I said, I've had lots of stories shared with me on my Instagram, which is great. <clears throat> We've also put it out to our academy group. Um, and so I'm going to talk in about some of the stats that came through there from the poll that we did in there. Um, and yeah, it's really, really interesting and very, very varied. Um, the one thing that's been quite consistent is that every family has their own way. And they've ad adapted the way that they do holidays according to the needs of their family. So I'll go through some sort of different areas of holiday because I don't think any of us really put, well, unless you're a SEND family, you don't put that much thought into holidays. But number one, it's about the length of the holiday. Are we going for a couple of days? Are we going for a week? Are we going for two weeks? Oh, my God, that fills me with dread. I used to love a two week holiday. Um, but I think with kids, it just it, with kids, <laughs> it's really tricky, isn't it? Being away from all your support networks and equipment and everything for that long. Um, some people just decide to do day trips and I've done that as well. Um, and with day trips, you've got to plan out where do carers go free? So please do. I'm going to come to the comment shortly. If you know of some places where carers go free, this is going to be a really good thread, okay, that people can refer back to. So pop them in the comments and I'll come to them shortly. Are there places where, where carers go free? Because this is really helpful to know, because if you think about it, um, some send parents work, you know, I'm, I feel very fortunate that I've been able to work full time and I really enjoy it um, throughout my parenting uh, lifetime, which is spanning over two decades. Um, some parents have to, they have no choice but to reduce their hours or stop working altogether. So cost is really, really important. So knowing that the carer can go free really does make things more um, achievable accessible and affordable. So it's really important that we have almost like a database of places where carers go free. So if you recommend somewhere where carers do go free, um, pop it in the comments and also put what your experiences have been of that. Because I've gone to places where I've thought carers go free um, and ended up not having uh, that care a ticket because they've said oh you booked it online and therefore we can't do it online and we can't do refunds and therefore you're going to have to just pay now um I had that with somewhere else where I won't name names but it was a, a, a particular park that was celebrating twins and I have twins and they basically said that you only have to pay for one twin or twins go free that's what it was twins go free and I thought what a great day out um, but actually you did have to pay for them because the only way you could get the, the free twin element was by paying on the door and then you run the risk of getting there and all the tickets being sold out. So you did have to pay. Sometimes there's some small print that means that carers don't go free. Um, and sometimes you can take that EHCP or DLA or carers allowance, uh, but the person there isn't trained to understand what it is they're looking at. So they don't allow the, the freebie. So do let me know. Um, oh, there we go. I've got a great comment here. I'm going to come straight to it. Lou Lottie says, most zoos, theme parks, um, most zoos and theme parks, carers go free and child can have a concession ticket. Mostly we've been to Alton Towers, Legoland, and they've both been very accessible. So that's great. Um, I'm going to come to the Merlin thing in a second because I know that they've changed their policies recently. Um 
So that was a, a, a really good comment, actually. Uh, yeah, see, Liz has said, what is the criteria for carer goes free? I, I honestly don't know. I gave up, if I'm honest, Liz. I, I'm, I can be very tenacious when I want to be, but also quite defeatist. <laughs> My selective mutism kicks in. And I think one of these things is that what frustrates me about the carers go free or any of these things for our children is that actually the levels we have to go to to prove that we should have that free carers pass or whatever, it's almost the same as applying for DLA or an EHCP. And you sort of think, oh my God, for the sake of a day, I'm just going to pay it because my selective mutism kicks in and I just can't cope. So if I get to a desk and they're starting to present me with obstacles, I'm like, I'll just pay, I'll just pay. It's just easier to pay because I don't know what you're asking me for. And it's not that accessible. And the thing is, you know, you can't call something inclusive when people have to then break down barriers to get to it. That's not inclusivity. That's not, um, I think a lot of these places, they advertise these things because it makes them look good, like autism friendly sessions and send friendly sessions. But actually to access them, you have to go at a specific time on a specific day when actually what they're saying is it's quiet there at those times anyway. Um, and you have to prove this and you have to prove that. And you're like, well, actually what you're marketing as this very kind thing and very inclusive thing isn't inclusive at all. Um, I talked um, about this on one of my workshops, I think it was, on the Sunshine Academy, where I talk about accessibility. And in one supermarket that I visit quite a lot, and actually I don't know whether they've listened to me because they've changed it now, but they had an entrance for, to the tills that was cordoned off because it said disabled access only. Only if you were in a wheelchair, it was really tricky to undo that cordon. <laughs> the irony in it um and so you know you kind of go what was the purpose of that accessibility that you're marketing is it to gain new followers and to to think that you know that the wider society will say that they you deserve extra respect because you're just being nice to humans um or is it truly accessible in which case take the barrier down take that cordon off just let people and now this particular supermarket have taken the cordon away but Take the cordon away. It's the same with all these, you know, you have to prove this, you have to prove that. Um, I understand the need for all of that when we're doing EHCPs and DLA, because actually um, it makes sure that that those who need it get it. Uh, well, that's what's meant to happen, isn't it? But also with EHCPs, of course, you've got plans that are written according to what the child's needs are, which is exactly what it's there for. But if I'm just getting access to a park, surely one specific standard letter would suffice you know whether that's an ehcp dla whatever um so it's tricky to know what the criteria is so if anybody knows or if anybody works at those places or tag them you know tag those places not that they'll answer but it's worth a shot um please do put them in the comments um it, with theme parks as well some of them offer the um ride access passes so wrap um and some of them, well, I, I don't think they meant to charge extra for it. I don't know. I've not accessed it. I find them a pain in the bum, to be honest with you. I find that all the admin quite overwhelming myself. This is why it's not sort of personal experience this time. So, but I hear that Merlin have changed their policy on the ride access passes recently. So if you know more about that, stick it in the comments. Um, in fact, I'll come to the comments now just to see if there is anything there. Um, sea Life Centre. Is meant to be good as well. Um, I've taken my kids there, but again, never accessed the um, the sort of carers or anything like that. Um, but yes. Oh, I don't think any of you know. <laughs> There's no comments at all. Um, so yeah, we're all a bit baffled, aren't we? Um, so if any of these places, Merlin in particular, if you can clarify these things, that would be great. Um, also with holidays, we've got the dilemma of deciding whether we stay home in the UK, have a staycation. Um, sorry, by the way, I've got hay fever. I've always got something going on, haven't I? Some sort of lurgy. Um, but I might just sneeze in the middle of this. Um, but yeah, whether we decide to go to the UK, stay in the UK, go on a little jaunt, a staycation, or maybe we decide to go abroad. Um, 
and how far from home we decide to go. Uh, because even if we do a staycation, some of our children, I know I was talking to one of my colleagues here at Sunshine and she said her daughter really struggles with the with the travel. So there's no way that they can do their family holiday to Cornwall because it's just too far, far too far. Um, and of course, you don't know what the traffic is going to be like. I know that um, we took our children to Cornwall a couple of years ago. And I think that the trip back was something like 10 hours. <laughs> it's quicker to go to Spain. Um, but if you decide to go abroad, there may be delays at the airport, even with the fast track. You can't predict a delay on an aeroplane, can you? Um, there's then the sort of keeping on top of anxieties um, because you're away from home, you're away from the comforts, you're away from you know, we, we, our tr children develop their own way of coping, don't they? And for instance, one of my children, um, she's a fantastic self-advocate. And I took her out for the day, took them all out for the day, um, doing half term. And we went to Manchester and we went to a number of different museums, which were very accessible, by the way. I was absolutely flabbergasted at how accessible these amazing museums were. And I know I came on and I talked about the People's History Museum in, in Manchester, hugely accessible, loads of sensory equipment, loads of sensory toys, loads of toilets, lifts, absolutely brilliant. Um, but my daughter, we finished one particular museum visit and she said, right, that's it. I'm done. Thanks very much for that. But I'm ready for home <laughs> because I need to have my home comfort. And I said, what is, is it? in particular that you're missing and she said my bed bear in mind it was only one o'clock in the afternoon um my bed and uh, I like to sit down and I like to chill out watching Ninjago and I'm like yeah you see we can't do that we can't do that when we're on the hop and I'm trying to service the needs of my other children and they're sort of they were very inquisitive when it came to, oh, we're in a new city, let's go to new places. Um, and we came to an agreement and she's really great to have a, a reasonable sort of discussion with, a uh, rational discussion with. Um, and she actually went on to do another museum and she was really, really happy. I have a feeling there was a bit of food bribery in there as well. <laughs> but keeping on top of those anxieties and understanding, you know, how are we going to meet our own needs and how do we do it at home? You know, understanding how do our children go and meet their own needs at home? What makes them feel so comfortable and safe at home? And how do we emulate that in another setting, particularly if we're traveling? Um you know, I know that with one of my children, she really, really struggled with all of this. And in the end, I thought, you know what? What's the point? What am I doing this for? Am I doing it because social media is filled with people's lovely holidays abroad? I'm stressing her out. I'm traumatizing her. Is it worth it? I don't think it is. Who am I doing it for? I'm doing it for me to think that I'm a good parent. But actually, being a good parent would be meeting her needs. She doesn't want to go. She doesn't want to do all this stuff. So it's understanding as well. Is it worth it? Um, In order to sort of keep on top of our children's needs and anxieties. Now, travel assistance at, at airports, um, I'd love to hear your stories on this. I Again, I've not used it personally, but I was talking to one of my colleagues who recently used it, I think it was last summer, um, and she used East Midlands Airport and she said they were great. Um, for her child, they didn't need the sunflower uh, lanyard um, as her, her disabilities are actually visible. Um, but what her daughter found very, very difficult was that the airport staff insisted on pushing her uh, her wheelchair and she didn't like that. And what I love about uh, this particular child is that she lets you know she's a really good self-advocate. Um, and so she was hitting the hands of the person who was actually pushing her in the wheelchair. And when we think about it, those sorts of things can really unsettle our children because they can feel unsafe. My caregiver, who normally pushes me in my wheelchair, is all of a sudden not pushing me in my wheelchair. So again... You know, airports, please consider this. I appreciate that it might make you look good because one of your staff members has got, you know, they're all lanyard up, lanyarded up and they've got their I'm a special person creating special things on the back of a uh, jacket or whatever. But actually, if we're really being accessible, the question needs to be asked, is your child going to be OK with me pushing them in their wheelchair or is it best that you do it? 
and I'll walk with you to make sure that you're escorted properly. So it's those sorts of things we need to be sort of considering. Um, but I'd be interested to know if any stories have come in. Let me just see. Uh, I can't see any airport one. Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, Angie says... We're doing a cruise that was way easier than the airport. Also, buffet food all day, so my family are happy. We can get off the ship and see a bit of a different country. We can also come back and have buff buffet lunch because that's usually more than enough for the kids. They can also have a nap whenever they want because they can go to the room. <gasps> Love that idea. Um, now, downside about cruises, because <laughs> I've been trying to book one for about three years, is that when you've got a family that's bigger than four, uh, it extends over to two cabins. Now, I know that there's one particular um, provider that has just started doing five um, in a room. But when you bounce up from one cabin to two cabins, the cost doubles. So what might be, you know, I don't know, for argument's sake, three grand, all of a sudden is six grand for the same holiday just because you've got one extra person. Um, but... I have heard lots of amazing things about cruises for, for families with SEND for all these reasons. You've got that sort of safety. You can create that safe space in the cabin and know that you can opt in and out all the time. So that that's really fantastic. And, you can, you know, with regards to waiting around, if there is a delay, you're in your cabin. So it's not like an airport where you're stuck in a waiting room with a hundred other people or more. Um, but, yeah, do let me know about airport stories. Um, another thing as well, and I've alluded to this, is how do we keep the kids entertained? Because it's not just about the entertainment, but about safety. Um, and also some of our children need to be, um, they need to be in their wheelchairs in order to keep them safe or their sort of um, their buggies and push chairs. Um, but they can't sit there forever because actually that might hurt them. Um so there are safety issues, there's health issues, and also the whole sort of keeping the brain moving issues, um, which I'll come to in a bit. Um, now, we asked our Sunshine Academy members, if you want to become a member, by the way, just comment and say, I want to become a Sunshine Academy member, um, and we'll post the link in the comments. But we asked our Sunshine Academy members, and none of them had gone abroad which is quite interesting, 22% of them decided to work from home um, with children over the holidays because they couldn't find any childcare um, and holidays were just not accessible to them for whatever reason. Another 22% of them went on a UK break. Um, but what's quite interesting is only 10% of them could access send specific childcare during the holiday. So this is not necessarily holidays, as in going on holidays, but actually accessing some childcare that is SEND specific. And I know this is a huge issue because it's a huge issue for my family. Um, we thought we'd found somewhere and it was really, really promising. And they asked for my child's EHCP and um, we went along and we did some um, transition work as well so that she felt like quite comfortable. And it was really, really promising. Um, and on the whole, my kids had a fantastic experience. But towards the end, a new key worker came in who was um, very bold and large and uh, sort of large in terms of personality, which is fantastic. Um, but my children found her quite aggressive. And so one of my children said to her, I really don't like it when you shout. And she said, but sometimes I have to shout because you're being naughty. And those sorts of words are now alien to my children. And so they were like, uh, we weren't being naughty. Uh, we might have been being boisterous because we were getting a bit excited with the activity that we were doing, but we weren't being naughty. Um, and she said, well, you're quite cheeky as well. And it was all a little bit like that. And she came and had a word with me afterwards. And she said, one of your kids has told me they've got special needs. Um, I know all about autism. I know all about ADHD. And I thought, well, you clearly don't because of the way you're talking to me. Um, and she said, you know, I know people and they're probably on the spectrum. And um, my boyfriend is probably on the spectrum. I'm probably on the spectrum somewhere. We all are somewhere. And you know, when you go, oh, you were all doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> and this was like the last couple of days. Um, and <clears throat> at that point, I realized this person had taken over this particular holiday club and it was no longer accessible to my children because 
I just can't get on board with that. Um, I also just can't. I like to send my kids, uh, if I'm sending my kids somewhere, I like to then be able to share that and give it kudos. And I certainly can't give that place kudos if they're talking to children like that. So it's really straight. It's just frustrating. Um, so if you do have any ideas for send specific childcare during the holidays, please do put them in the comments. Um, I had another bad experience actually years and years ago where one of my children had very, very uh, complex sensory difficulties and she was very young. Um, she was about five at the time. And her one of my older children, um, which she was only she's actually only three years older, um, so she would have been eight. Um, she was told by the key workers if your special needs sister needs anything you're gonna have to deal with it because we don't know what we're doing about we're only teenagers um and that was a really big provider of holiday clubs which i if you'd come and talk to me on a on a one-to-one -one basis i will tell you who it is but i was absolutely appalled i got all my money back and um there were you know they they did what they needed to do in terms of disciplinary procedures but absolutely appalling that my daughter age eight was tasked with looking after my other daughter aged five at the time um oh appalling absolutely appalling and we get that don't we for the send siblings as well is that actually they're they're pulled into all of this it's really not fair because actually they get left out um they don't want they can't get to do what they want to do quite often um i know we've spoken to a number of send siblings and this is really sad and i don't want anybody to go for me okay this is their personal thoughts and experiences that they love their siblings so much and they want the very best for them but they feel held back they feel like they can't go on the holidays that that they used to go on or they can't go to the kids clubs that they used to go to or you know there's lots of restrictions within their lives and they're 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 usually the most empathetic kids actually send siblings um but it doesn't mean that they're still not feeling it you know and um that's really really difficult because i've got no answers for you there um but also then we come into the uh, the sort of topic of when do we take the kids? Do we take them during term time or do we take them during the holidays? Now, um, some of us say, I'm just going to pay the fine. I'm just going to pay the fine because it's better. It's more affordable that way. And I feel like my child is getting more out of the holiday. Others say, no, I don't want to pay the fine. I don't want a black mark against my name. I'm going to take them during the um uh, holiday season um but it's just going to be really really tricky um some i mean we we put this out to the wider public and a lot of people said surely they learn more whilst traveling anyway um now kelly jarvis our resident uh send head teacher said that actually she we were chatting on something recently. It might have been a Facebook Live. Um, and she was saying that, um, or it might have been a recent podcast, actually. So if you've not watched or listened to our podcasts, do listen to them. They're on Spotify. Um, they're free. You know, if you're if you're a Spotify subscriber, then they're on there. You can also watch them as well on uh, YouTube. But we've got an extra length version on the Academy as well. Um, but yeah, Kelly Jarvis would as has always said that she used to authorize school uh, term time holidays um, because she felt like they were learning and they were getting quite a lot out of it. Um, and then this sort of brings me on to as well, do we all go together as a family? This is a really, really difficult one to decide. And I remember one of my, one of my children has got um, PDA and I've spoken about this at length. And she really wanted to go to Disney, uh, just to the Paris one. And we, as a family of six, all went to Disney, had the most wonderful time. Um, and she really, really enjoyed it. And she felt like it was a, a really, it, we celebrated her birthday. And she said, it's much better for me because I don't have to rely on people coming to a party because I never feel very popular. Um, and so it was a really lovely trip. Um, and we all enjoyed and um, all my children really benefited from it, um, we thought, until we got back and the sensory overload and the whole experience just completely overwhelmed her. And she had one of the biggest um, distressing episodes that she's ever had. And it will stay with me 
till my dying day um, because it was absolutely so traumatizing for her, traumatizing for us, traumatizing for our other children as well. And it made me realize that it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. Yeah, okay, it was fun times, but was it was it worth it? No, because it ultimately we now remember that holiday as that that happened at the end. Um, and it was really traumatizing for her. And so we decided from that point that we would divide and conquer. And it was a real hard pill to swallow because we were all of a sudden being split up on our family holidays and we didn't go all together. So I would take her on my own, which, by the way, was delightful. She got to control what we did. She was in charge um, and it was just easier. It was just so much easier um, and just more enjoyable for both of us. And nobody was traumatized by it. It was an absolute delight. Um, but I know that on our recent podcast, Nicole talks about this. She goes into quite a lot of detail about it. Um, so do have a listen to that podcast. I'm not going to sort of just talk about uh, Nicole's experience, but Nicole is one of our advocates and she's got send lived experience herself. So do have a listen to that. Um, so... We've also got, so let me go to my Instagram because on Instagram, people have shared their stories with me. So bear with me and I will get these stories up. So uh, let's have a little look. So Kelly says um, she makes a detailed booklet for her stepson when they go away, explaining in detail everything that will happen from the night before right up until we arrive at the destination. And I pray that nothing interrupts it, she says. Um, taking non-negotiables with us, squash and certain foods that are staples, a buggy clip holder for the phone on my, li my little girl watches, uh, or her little girl watches YouTube Um on that particular phone, YouTube Kids. Um, and that keeps her entertained at the airport. Play-Doh, books, games for the flight with a different snack box. I mean, snacks, ooh, they're very important. Um, and if all this works, she has a little wine as well. <laughs> I love that. Um, Sam says she takes a whole 22 kilo suitcase full of safe foods on an all-inclusive holiday. That is no me feet. Um, and that's really hit hard this year, she says, seeing just how upset her son got at meal times when there was nothing for him to eat. Missing his yoghurt. So, so hard. Apart from that, sea, sun, sand pool was my son's heaven. Uh, Helen says, um, I have a little touring caravan. My son loves it and it's, it's his safe place to return to in unfamiliar surroundings. I can take and cook his favourite foods, yet we also enjoy going on adventures and discovering new things. It's a great cost-effective way of holidaying that works for us. I've got a friend who's bought a caravan, actually. She absolutely um, loves taking her children. And, uh, yeah, they get to go to different places. It's absolutely amazing. Um so Ella says, information overload leading up to it, picking their own holiday clothes, fidget toy bags for travel, showing them videos and pictures of the place and activities, and then praying nothing goes wrong. There's a lot of praying going on, isn't there? Um, Rebecca says, about to book a Nielsen holiday. They have a one-to-one -one childcare available within their inclusive holiday clubs for kids. Also, we've just returned from a holiday in Spain. And I would recommend getting a sunflower lanyard so you can speed through passport control on the way home. This was Gatwick, she says, especially around half term when it's busy with lots of families. Um, Rian says, haven't taken my son on a holiday, on a plane yet. He couldn't manage the unpredictables at the airport. I feel this. Um, so lots, you see, there's no common thread, is there, other than lots of planning. Um, and so, you know, I'm really, really, I'm going to, come to your um, comments in a second, but I have got some top tips for you to consider. So we've heard all the way through today, sunflower lanyards. Um, they really are a godsend for so many families. Um, and I think that I'd be interested to know what your experiences are actually of sunflower lanyards, because um, again, I've not used them, um, but so many people talk so well about them. Um, Ziploc bags. Now, lots of our children are still in nappies or pull-ups or, you know, that sort of thing. And we can't 
guarantee when they're going to have an explosion, a punami. <laughs> so um, a good tip that's been sent in to us is carrying Ziploc bags, because if you've got nowhere to put that, <laughs> I'd be sorry to take it down a notch or two, uh, lowering the tone right down this morning. Um, but it's practical. Um, if you've got nowhere to put that, that nappy, um, then you could put it in the Ziploc bag and lock it up until you can find a bin. Um, easy to change clothes. So wearing something that's simple. A lot of parents were saying that they just stick on some, you know, if it's a woman, leggings and a t-shirt or leggings and a vest top or whatever, uh, because they're easy to change. But also taking clothes that are easy to change into. So, you know, pretending that you're going swimming, I always say to my kids, just take like a onesie <laughs> that you can just whip on and whip off. Um, snacks. Snacks are a very important part of parenting, full stop, aren't they? Um, my kids, when we're on a school holiday, I have to spend about 50 quid a week on snacks. <laughs> so getting your snacks ready for a holiday, very, very important task. Also, remember, a lot of our children have safe foods um, or my, I, I'm, I feel quite lucky because my children don't have any difficulties like that and they will eat anything that's put in front of them and they particularly love food they've not tried before so taking them to a foreign country is a dream for them um if we could get to a foreign country um but so many children i had one of my children really struggled with foreign food and she liked specific things a specific chicken nugget specific pasta and she ate them in a specific way and so if I had my time again I probably would pack that stuff if I could very difficult to transport chicken nuggets to Portugal isn't it um, activities so thinking about you know the worst case scenario something is delayed you're stuck in traffic whatever it may be having activities to hand that your child has chosen. So they've almost got like a box of tricks or a bag of tricks that they can uh, rely on if they need to. Um, and I don't think you can ever have too many. So if you're traveling in a car, get a box in the boot that's full of this stuff. Um, if you're going abroad, make sure that everybody has something in their rucksack that they take onto the plane. Um, but again, you know, with the cruises, that's what's great about that, I guess, because you've always got these things in your room. So... Um, and also don't remember, don't, don't worry about the peer pressure and social pressure of having your child on an iPad. Forget it. Forget what so society says. If your child needs an iPad because it keeps them nice and regulated and calm, then you just meet their needs and do that. Um, another thing that's been sent in to us as a top tip is always have an exit plan if things are going wrong. So it's exhausting, this is, by the way. I find this really, really exhaust exhausting. Wherever you go, scanning around to make sure that you can see a toilet and an exit. So if things start to go a little bit wrong and your children start to sort of let you know that they're not very happy, usually in an inappropriate way, then you've got a way out. Um, although that is quite tricky as well when you're in an airport, isn't it? Um, I've already alluded to this. It's about considering whether it's actually worth it. Um, maybe you want to do day trips rather than the big holiday. Maybe you do something else. One year, one of my children, my PDA, was struggling really badly and she couldn't really leave the house. So we thought it would be incredibly hard and unfair to plan any sort of family holiday. So what we did was we created it in the back garden. So we had a sand pit um, and we had a pool and I'm not on about big things, you know, just little things so that, you know, the little ones felt like they were at the beach. <laughs> um, and we created things like, and you, Google's your best friend with things like this, but we created um, a glow in the dark bowling alley. So we got bottles of water and we put, um, what are they called? Glow sticks. We, you know, cracked a glow stick, put it in this bottle of water um, and we put just tap water in there, screwed it up. And then at night time, it became a glow in the dark uh, um, bowling alley. We, My husband painted these two pieces of wood that would act as the bumpers. And we just said to the kids, just kick a ball down. And so the 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 bottles of water became the pins. The ball became the bowl. And then we had these um, 
painted and he, he got sort of glow in the dark paint <laughs> to go on the bumpers that go down the either, either side of the bowling alley. It was great fun. It cost us next to nothing to do. Um, we also did this particular game where we had this um, this structure um, where my husband's a filmmaker, so he's got a lot of portable film studio stuff. And uh, he had this portable film studio backdrop thing, like a, like a tripod thing with a bar going across the top. And hanging from there, we put water balloons. And then my kids had to use a bat to burst the water balloon. <laughs> and the older the child was, they had to have a... Um, a face mask on, what's it called, a, a, a blind on, so that they literally then were, they couldn't see where they were hitting. And we obviously kept them safe, but it was great fun. But having those sorts of fun games in the garden is possible. And actually, kids love making this stuff. Have a look on Pinterest, have a look on Google. You know, you will find ideas to make it fun at home. Um, we also make um, popcorn and have a cinema night. Um, and that was great fun. We used to love having cinema nights. Um, and yeah, there's loads that you can do at home. So never feel like just because you're staying at home and you're deciding to do your um, school holidays that way, that you're selling yourself short or your child's not getting anything out of it. Because my kids still talk about that more than they talk about foreign holidays. So it's all about that because you're connecting, you're staying together and you're having fun. Um, another thing, if you're able to, and I mean, some of us are fortunate, I'm certainly not fortunate in this way, um, but have as many adults with you on your holiday or trips out as you can possibly get. <laughs> so really rely on that support network. Um, and like I said, some people have great support networks and they, they can take their parents or grandparents or whatever. Um Others don't. So I appreciate that. Um, now, a really good and this isn't an ad because they don't even know I'm speaking about this, but I'm going to talk about um, a really fantastic UK based uh, holiday company that I've used for my children and for our holidays as a family. And I've just found them absolutely out of this world. And that's Spectrum Holidays. Now, I went to one of their caravans in Northumberland at Haggerston Castle. And um, it was absolutely delightful. And Sophia, who runs the company, she got in touch with me before we arrived to ask me all about my children so that she could make sure that the space was a sensory pleasing place to be for them, that it wasn't too overwhelming. She then showed me all the different things that they have there. They've got the egg chair, they've got these different sensory walls, they've got all sorts of stuff. And she said, what things would your children most like to have in their car? Caravan, and she designed the caravan around the children. She then spoke at length about their interests. Um, and when we got there, we realized why she was saying that, because actually their bedrooms are all designed around them. So one of my kids loves Marvel. So hers was all very Marvel based. Another one loved unicorns. And so that was all very unicorn based. Um, and they each had a sensory pack on arrival that they could take home with them. So that belonged to them. Um, and Sophia also helped me plan the entire weekend. We had a very long weekend. I think it was over like a, an October half term sort of time. And she helped me plan all the activities. So I never felt like I was overwhelmed. I never felt that we had nothing to do. We had things to opt in and opt out of. I knew where the food was. She prepped me within an inch of my life, but it was with me, not just sending barrage of information at me, you know, and just, you know, sometimes people say, oh, well, I've sent you the information. That's all I can do. Actually, this was far more interactive. Um, and it was absolutely amazing. My kids loved it. They talk about it all the time. And I need to go back, really. But I know that Spectrum Holidays don't just have their caravan at Haggerston. They have properties all over the UK. So do check them out because they're absolutely lovely and they're a Send family themselves. So they get it and it makes a difference because you can tell. You can tell in the way that they talk to you and prep you. So I'm going to come to the comments now. Let me have a quick look. Um, Katie says, Chrissa, safe foods is definitely another topic to cover. Send folk and safe foods. What if a hotel doesn't do the right food, cooks it differently, having to pay extra for uh, having to pay for extra luggage to take safe food abroad is one I see a lot. Absolutely. Um, Angie says, 
Um, the, the cost of holidays is a problem. Um, we try and book two years in advance and then it's easier to pay it off. Absolutely. Um, let me see what else we've got. I don't know whether I've had that many um, comments, actually. Uh, okay. Okay, back to the carer's card. You can get a CEA card, a CEA ticket for the cinema where the carer goes free. This sounds good. I think I've heard about that before, actually. Um, Emma, our Emma Tooby, says um, East Midlands were great for us the other week. We didn't go to the special assistance desk, but my little one did wear a sunflower lanyard and they quickly fast tracked us. They even let her go through the x-ray with her ear defenders on. Oh, bless her. That's that's so good. And I know you were really anxious about that. Um, Lou says we can get a, uh, you can get a max card that could be used as proof as well of carers. Ah, okay. So we were talking earlier about having this proof of whether you're a carer and I think Carers Plus and other organizations offer these cards. Okay. Give that a Google guys. Um, Kirsty says we've tried to plan everything in advance. Lots of notice have plan A, B and C just in case anything goes wrong. But we usually do well as a family because we support each other. That's one of the lovely things of our send families, isn't it? We've got loads of empathy and understanding for one another. Um, Taya says, I used my DLA letter in Spain recently for museum and zoos. That's good to know that they recognised it in Spain. Um, Liz said, I applied for a Carers UK card, sent the EHCP and the card came back with no extra concessions. I was at least hoping for much needed queue assistance, but nothing, pointless. I keep meaning to query it out of principle, but there goes my selective mutism too. And also Liz, you're tired from fighting the fight. Like every day is a battle for us as SEND parents, isn't it? It's not the kids themselves that make us exhausted. It's the fight for services. And so this is just another thing that we have to battle for. And it's one that, you know, if you're dealing with EHCPs all day or, you know, any kind of everyday matter, those sorts of things falls by the wayside. Jess says, East Midlands Airport was brilliant for assisted travel. We went to a desk before check-in and we were fast-tracked through everything. My daughter was waving bye to everyone in the queues. I can imagine that. Um, as she was wheeled past in a wheelchair like the queen that she is. We then had to go to a quiet lounge to wait once we had used the shops and we boarded first. And Bella loved the plane journey. I think it was sensory related. She was giggling the whole takeoff. Abroad holidays are better than UK holidays for us. Um, so Sunshine Support has commented. So this, I don't know who this is, probably Katie, because she's got a lot of experience in this area. So if a SEND family wanted to go to a Merlin Park tomorrow, had passes already, but did not know that they needed to leave seven days to ensure wrap, they'd not be able to access the rides. Okay, so you need to be looking into this, guys. You need to be looking into this um, very, very carefully. You can look on the Merlin website for this. Um, Oh, Tyre, this is a good idea. Tyre says she keeps a photo on her phone of the DLA letter. That way she can use opportunities ad hoc so that she's not always sort of having to carry the letter with her. Um, okay, let me see. Where do you get Max cards? You might have to Google that one, but if anybody can answer, do let us know. Um, Louise has also posted a lovely link, www.discountforcarers.com. So that looks good. Definitely explore that. Um, so there's lots to consider there, which obviously shows there is further send family tax involved in holidays. Um, I hope it's given you something to think about. If you're watching this on playback, by all means, please do get involved and contribute to the conversation this morning, because for every comment that somebody reads, you're going to make it a little bit easier for them to access a holiday or maybe childcare within the holidays um, or days out. Um, but the big recommendations for me would be Spectrum Holidays. Absolutely check them out because they are worth their weight in gold. They're absolutely amazing. Um, and in terms of um, museums, the one that I can wholeheartedly say was absolutely brilliant was the People's History Museum in Manchester. I have tried to tag them previously, but I don't think they've got a Facebook page. But if you know somebody who works there, say a huge thank you from the SEND community because it was absolutely phenomenal how fantastic they were and all the help on hand all the way around.
Absolutely amazing. Um, so if you have any questions about that, please do get in touch, pop a comment on the actual thread. Um, just a little reminder of what we've got coming up. So tonight we've got a very emotive webinar on um, child to parent abuse. Um, it's not going to be recorded because it's too sensitive a topic. Um, but if you want the um, the link for that one, then you're very, very welcome. Um, on Thursday, we've got dyslexia. We've got a webinar all on dyslexia, understanding it as a parent, understanding it as a teacher, knowing how to get assessments, how to get a diagnosis, um, how to get support, what sort of support, what should we be doing, a very hands-on, practical webinar. So dyslexia is one of the most common learning difficulties. Um, and so we expect that to be a very busy webinar. So if you want to come along to that, please do comment and let us know and we will share the link with you. Um, and then next week, we've got another emotive webinar, um, something that I know is very, very important to so many parents, understanding and supporting autistic people who self-harm. Um, so many people think it's one thing. So many people think it's another. You know, a lot of people say it's just sensory. Others say um, it's actually a cry for help. Others say it's it's linked to depression. We're going to be exploring it all again. Very, very emotive. But that one is recorded. So if you're an Academy member, it will be on the Academy. Um, and then next week again, so we've got lots going on in June. We've got a webinar on EOTAS, education other than at school. Now, I'm not sure if you've got any webinar tickets left for that one. Um, but do check it out because, again, absolutely fantastic webinar on understanding what else there is available for children who can't access school you know school isn't uh isn't the best place for for many children um and the week after we've got my webinar on school attendance difficulties and school avoidance so if you want to come along to that i think there are a few tickets left on that one as well so by all means just comment below um if you need us, give us a shout. Remember, we've got the Sunshine Academy where you can access our advocates and have discussions with them in our community area. Um, if you want to be a member, it's just $10.99 a month and you get access to hundreds and hundreds of webinars and courses and quizzes and home ed resources and uh, the community, which is invaluable. Um, and of course, we've got um, things like Ask Me Anything events. So we've got one coming up on the 27th of June where Gabby, our specialist teacher and advocate, is going to be face to face with you in a Zoom meeting and she's going to be taking your questions and answering them. And that's all on the Academy. So, and she'll answer anything relating to EHCPs, school provision, um, send family experiences, you name it. She's she's absolutely phenomenal. Um, so she's going to be doing that at seven o'clock on the 27th. I think I've got the date right. Um, but if you need access to anything that I've just mentioned today, other than holidays, I can't organize a holiday for you guys. <laughs> I can't organize a holiday for me. I get it wrong all the time. Um, but if you need access to anything, if you need any help, don't suffer in silence. Get in touch. Remember as well, we've got our cuppa and chat in our lovely hub here behind me um, on Friday. Um, that's 10 till noon. Um, and we're based in Derby here, but we actually help people across the world. So do let us know if you need any help. We're here for you, okay? Have a lovely day. The sun has come out, so I hope it continues to stay. Let's hope the rain stays away and it warms up a little bit. If you need us, give us a shout. Speak to you soon. Bye.